What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Roboco, and in the last episode, we built this sort of realistic-ish car. Uh, we've got a steering mechanism on the front here, driven by this central servo, and of course, we've got a differential motor set up on the back, and the whole thing connected with drive shafts and double wishbone suspension. Now, I had a few people comment this isn't really double wishbone suspension. I, I realize that double wishbone suspension is two, like, wishbone-looking things, one on top of each other, and they pivot up and down. But they create the same movement as this, which is just a parallel movement. So the wheel goes up and down because this beam here is always parallel with this beam here. So that's sort of the double wishbone. But yes, it's technically not two wishbones with the spring in the middle of them. And the drive shaft should be in the middle. But anyway, we built this car. It's all right. Obviously, our steering has some, has some problems. Um, the double CV joint thing, a lot of people were telling me was wrong and uh you know it, it needs to be fixed but anyway what i want to do today is try building a different style of car we're going to completely scrap this i want to build a car that's front wheel drive front wheel steering it's a very common mechanism most of the cars that you see on the road like small sedans that sort of thing hatchbacks and all that a lot of the smaller cars do it that way i guess for simplicity and I, I, I don't actually know why they do that. I guess it's just easier to have all the mechanical stuff up front and the back axle just kind of sits there and does nothing. But I've got a picture here. I'm going to throw it on the screen. And this is sort of the typical front wheel drive setup. I believe this is a McPherson strut setup where the suspension is on top and then the whole wheel pivots. So this means as the wheel compresses, as it bends in, it should camber inwards, I believe, right? Because the lower arm will control the outer point and the top of the wheel will bend in as it goes up i think is how this is going to work so i want to try building this setup um whole new car and let's see if we can actually do that i'm not exactly sure how we're going to do this but we're going to have a differential in the middle going to two drive shafts of course and that whole thing powered by a motor and then of course we'll have our suspension on top all right, so we're going to start with our differential. Um, I guess we can right away just put some rods coming out of either side. We'll have to scale those as well. Actually, no, we don't have to scale those. Those go straight to CV joints. And this feeds our two axles. So we're going to build one axle first, and then we'll deal with that. This differential needs to be mounted somewhere. That's correct, actually. Um, yeah, never mind. No, we do need to have a little bit more space. And of course, it has to be symmetrical because there's no slip on this differential. If we have one axle bigger than the other, then the load is uneven and more power will go one way compared to the other. And that's not exactly ideal. So we're going to just extend this out, make that symmetrical. We will put a mounting block around it like so. Perfect. And we'll put another one on this side. So that's how we'll mount our differential. And then, of course, we'll set our joints on that to rotate freely perfect all right then we're gonna build a frame out from this and then we'll worry about the motor and stuff after the fact but there we go whoops there we go perfect that's a connected frame we can bring these two forward as well um we're gonna need a drive gear shoot how did i do this last time i went oh yeah we did this out to another gear and then it just makes your life easier so we go out like this to another regular gear like so perfect those are meshed and then we'll put a drive gear coming out of this it's a pretty standard setup i honestly should just save this because this is really just like it's like a drive whoops okay that needs to come out one more hold on a minute there we go and can i no just whatever all right perfect there we go done so if we configure this motor DC motor, yeah, no, that's fine. Controls, W, spin forward. Controls, spin reverse. Uh, we can click on this. Max RPM, 200, sure. Max torque, 5,000, yeah. So cool. I love all the gears in this game. It's really, really awesome. It's too bad that this differential has gears on both sides. If it had gears on just the one side, like just one tooth, then you could mesh this right directly up against it. But because there's two, we need this extra gear in here, which isn't really like a big deal, but it just kind of ruins the aesthetic. But look at that. That's that's perfect. All right. Now we get to do all the fun stuff. So the first thing we're going to have to do is make a mount point for our bottom suspension piece. Now, I'm not going to build this 
on both sides because obviously I just want to try and like minimize the number of joints we have, which will just, you know, increase game performance. So we're not going to build like two bearings on the bottom here. We'll just build one and it should have the same effect. So if I do like this, for example, and just extend this piece out, right? And then we can change this to be a swivel joint. And there we go. That's, you know, that would be our control arm. Normally on a car, you'd have two, right? You'd have it like a, a Y-shaped wishbone type thing. But we're just going to do it with one to save performance. Now, of course, the question is, where the heck does the pivot need to be? I feel like the pivot needs to be lined up with the CV joint, right? That would be my thought. So the pivot should be like out here. And then <laughs> on the top of this, we need another piece because this is our steering piece that swivels, right? And we need this piece scaled. So this is what our wheel mounts to. And it's also what our axle goes through if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to need this to go to a straight axle and then go to... Okay, so this probably has to move out a little bit more. Something like that. And then our drive axle goes through here. And then this piece will swivel about that. Right? No, that needs to be a ball bearing. Shoot, that needs to be a ball bearing so that it can actually swivel and tilt. Because it has to be able to tilt as well. Okay, hold on. So we got... Oh boy, this is... Um, what if we... This goes up like this. And we can put a ball bearing connection like that. Yeah, that's what that needs to be. Oh my god, that's amazing that this piece exists. That's so cool. Alright, so I think we can put the axle on now. So the axle would extend through like this. The joint on the axle, this would swivel. That's fine. This gets a CV joint like that. And then we put another axle. Holy cow, just like that. Okay. Alright. This piece needs to swivel. And this piece also needs to be mounted to the suspension up top. I've never actually built a front wheel drive car before, so I'm hoping this works. So that's like that, right? And that, if I put weight on this, would that compress? I feel like it should. It works. I mean, this spring gets completely like freaking obliterated. But aside from the spring getting obliterated, it actually, like it actually compresses the ball joint. But that'll be fine, because once there's a steering thing holding this, a steering rod, I don't know, it says it's supposed to be a ball joint, according to the picture. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I I think this is just a reality of video game physics. Let's get the steering rod attached, and then maybe this will, this whole thing will work. Um, okay, so let's duplicate that, and then figure out the steering situation. I'm also going to clean this up, make this out of pipe pieces, so it looks a little less stupid. Like, if we just go, like this oh that puts you on a half block that's weird hold on what if i do something like this then instead there we go i don't know i think this is gonna work i think it's gonna i think it's gonna work once we get the steering there as well we should also have like a you know some sort of like a control arm that keeps this arm level i guess that's the steering arm itself i'm not exactly sure about that i feel like i just need stronger well there should be a sway bar i guess that connects both sides together that connects like this side to this side underneath i'm not gonna do that because you know who cares but these spring i need stronger springs the devs are watching i need stronger springs i love all these gears and stuff but i need i need me some springs maybe i should use pistons maybe if i used a small telescopic piston it could act as a spring Hmm, that might be something to test in the future. All right, I think we're good here, though. I'm going to leave it like this. I just need to... Well, hold on. We can drive. Look at that. W works. Unbelievable. And, and S flips us, but that's actually fantastic. So we just need steering. I don't remember how I did this last... I think that... Oh, yeah, that one moves left and right if you put power to the gray one, right? So we need... Oh, boy. This is... Everything gets so complicated, and I love it, but it just gets... Very confusing very fast. Especially when you're trying to build on a grid-based game and you're trying to build stuff in real life that, you know, has diagonals. Like, what a crazy thought. I, I don't think I can... I think this needs to go forward more. Maybe up to here? No, it needs to be in line with that. Okay. Um, And then we'd have to be that high up to... Yeah, this will work, right? And we can just have this come across and then CV joint to a thing here. And then it'll just have an extender piece that comes up. It's a little bit weird, but, you know, it is what it is. Okay, I think that'll work. So we need to mount this to something. 
just, you know, grab a piece. Boom, done. That's mounted. We need a motor on that. Well, we need a shaft in here first, and then we need another shaft here. This shaft extends out, so that's for our pushing rod dealio. We need, I guess they'd be CV joints or universals. It really doesn't matter. Okay, and then uh, what else we need? Return to origin, yes. Acceleration time, zero, sure. Max RPM, 125, boom. Yeah. Fast steering, look at that. Is that correct? No, these are reverse. These are in the opposite direction. Okay, so go left is actually spin reverse and go right is actually spin forward. Left, right. I love this, it's so sick. Okay, cool, so now we just have to connect this rod to here and it needs a swivel joint and that's it. So we need to put a piece that comes up to meet the height, perfect. Let's do the same on this side while we're at it. I actually hope this works. It's kind of sketchy looking, like the dimensions look kind of weird compared to the drawing. I probably need to go back and tweak the dimensions a little bit, uh, but we are in a block-based video game. I just like to remind everyone of that. In case you haven't noticed, it is a grid-based video game meant for building robots and we're building a freaking driving car mechanism. So chill out, I'm working on it. Okay, so. We need this final piece. Okay, what do I, I need a swivel. It just gotta rotate left and right, right? Cause if this tilts up and down, this whole thing hinges in, which is fine. So this, it needs a hinge. Yeah, okay, okay, this is good. So we just need to do something like this, really. Um, Just a, like, I guess we could use this piece, like so. And that connects directly to a push rod that goes from here all the way to that swivel joint. And that's a fixed connection. So, theoretically, if I've done this right, these will account for the bending of the movement, but this arm, the whole wheel swivels in as it goes down and it swivels up when it goes out. So it's like, okay, I've got some, got some issues here. Okay, well, well, shoot. What, what's, I can turn, but my, my turning is not, you know, hold on, let's put some back wheels on this thing. So we can move forward, that's no problem. We can go in reverse, oh god, it's so bouncy. Uh, and we can turn, but our turning radius is, like, it's, it's, it works. I can turn, right is not as good as left for some reason. I don't, I don't know, they're both kind of the same. I just don't understand. I'm having some interference issues. It's with the drive axle. But the question is why? And is it because of, is it a dimension thing? Like, is it, does this pivot need to move over more? Maybe this axle needs to be extended out further. It's, it's definitely a dimension issue. See, like the drawing I'm using is obviously not dimensionally accurate. But then even if it was, it's trying to translate those dimensions Okay, well, at least we have the thing, the, the, uh, it's so hard to say. I got some sort of a, oh, now my steering doesn't work at all. It's just jammed. Okay, sick. Hold on. We got a, there's some dimensional problem going on here. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've widened it out. I think the problem is that the drive shaft itself, like if we turn, I've widened them out. Like they're one block wider now on the pieces, but even if it's, it's wider, the problem is like, see this, when we, when we push this piece, right this this drive shaft can only go so far and then you know we've stretched this drive shaft completely but like on a car i don't think those drive shafts like extend at all they're solid shafts so i don't understand dimensionally how the heck that works like i could move the whole steering mechanism forward the obvious solution is if i allow this joint to slide and pivot then our wheels will actually move in, but this should... See, look at that. It works. Like, now our drive shaft can extend. Look at that. But that's... I don't think that's how a real car does it at all. Because otherwise your whole your whole brake situation would move. You see, there's no way this is how your car does it. I'm, I'm trying to think. I've never actually worked on the steering mechanism of a car before in real life. So I couldn't tell you... I know it's a rack and pinion and all that, but uh, yeah, I couldn't tell you how it actually works specifically... But I gotta figure out the drive shaft problem. Either way, this is a pretty good, pretty good setup. Look at that. 
Yeah, that's that's amazing. Now I've got it adjusted a little bit. Now there's no interference. That's actually so cool. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'm going to adjust this just a little bit more. 130, 130. I'm, like, it's close. Obviously, you know, making the drive shaft slide in and out, basically, you can't even notice the amount of movement it does. But it's just the slightest middle movement. See how, like, this wheel gets pushed out a little bit? And that one just gets a little bit closer. But it's just enough to give us the right tolerance. But look at that. It's a front-wheel drive mechanism. I mean, not not perfect. It's It's got some issues. I just got to figure out what that, like, how they do it. I got to look at the dimensions of it. This drawing that I have... It's kind of just a, a rough drawing, but I don't think it's necessarily dimensionally accurate. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure, of course, you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you want to see more RoboCo, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, obviously, I'm trying to get to the point where I can, you know, mix this with the rear-wheel drive stuff and make an all-wheel drive car. That would be fantastic. And do like a central motor driving to a multi-differential setup. Not sure if the game's going to explode before then, but uh, I'm pretty happy with how this mechanism came out. I'm just a little unfortunate that I have to cheat the system with that little thing. But I mean, you guys in the comments, I'm sure you'll have some great suggestions on how that works in real life. So let me know what you guys think. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time.